All right, so my name is Troy Wilkinson and I'm the CEO of Axiom Cyber Solutions. So today we're going to talk about cybersecurity with Microtik, and that's something that some people don't really put together. You know, Microtik is a fantastic router, uh, and it's a fantastic uh, appliance. It's cost-effective for most people. Um, but we've been using uh, Microtik for over three years for cybersecurity, and uh, we've rolled out a threat intelligence product that we're going to talk about. But I just want to go over the basics of, of how your uh, Microtik can be turned into a cybersecurity appliance. And this is for people who already own Microtiks, who are concerned about cybersecurity and the new threats that are out there, and being able to use the hardware that you already own to create a good cybersecurity appliance. So first of all, Axiom is exclusively a cybersecurity company. We don't actually uh, do some of the routing and the consulting that some of you guys do. There's a lot of WISPs in the room, a lot of ISPs here. Uh, so we don't get into that side of things. We were founded uh, to be a cybersecurity company. We have researchers that are always looking at the latest threats, trends, and uh, trying to help us craft new uh, algorithms to stop those threats. We also do full vulnerability scanning, penetration testing, uh, and the full gamut for cybersecurity for businesses uh, in the U.S. And, and abroad. So, you know, the latest threats and trends that we're seeing today are ransomware and crypto jacking and some of the, the uh, new crime waves that we've seen that are funded by, uh, by Bitcoin and blockchain and some of the digital currencies that we're seeing. So cybersecurity has really taken an uptick since hackers are being paid for their services. Uh, by using this anonymous currency or using cryptocurrency to get paid for some of the things that they've been writing, uh, we've seen exponential increases in attacks uh, on businesses and increased attacks on homes. So what we're trying to do is come up with ways to stay ahead of the latest attacks and trends. Uh, and basically, if you have static uh, firewall rules that are not dynamic, then you're already out of date because they change daily and, and by the minute, really. <clears throat> Axiom is also exclusively a Microtik shop. For more than three years, we've been integrating with Microtik Router OS. We've been building our own algorithms, looking to increase the effectiveness of layer 7 matching, uh, increase the effectiveness of address lists and block lists, uh, as well as the dynamic firewall rules, which are all based on Microtik's best practices. Uh, along with some of the community, uh, such as Rick Fry, who is a great resource in the U.S., but also Microtik consultants from around the world, who uh, not only inspire us to write better code, but also help us to identify when we don't. Uh, the reason we use Microtik is because it's flexible in its deployment. It can go on your edge, it can go in your core, it can be the service router for your backhaul, it can be in the data center, it can be in the cloud now. We do have uh, presence in Amazon with the cloud-hosted router, which is a fantastic product which allows us to service most of the United States from a cloud perspective and do our BGP peering uh, to help us not only give better service to our clients but increase speed. Microtik gives us the ability to run scripts, so you'll see that a lot of our protections are based on scripts that run. We'll talk about uh, why we use those and what they do. Uh, but also it allows us to update the protections behind the scenes with no degradation to service. So these scripts run. Uh, and they're dynamic, but they don't impact uh, the CPU very much. They don't impact the throughput, uh, and we can do this on the fly. In other words, we can update our routers while they're running without any in, uh, impact to the clients. Uh, and most importantly, the ability to connect Microtik to our platform. We've been able to integrate and write code that will allow us to talk to uh, not only our Microtiks, but, but uh, our customers as well. So it allows us to do that. And most uh, closed source uh, devices like your Sonic Walls and your Sophos <coughs> devices and Cisco, they would never allow us to integrate with their protections because they want to own that. Uh, but we feel like there's a lot more power to gain from having the open source and the open mentality so that we have a lot more eyes on our products and our security that can help us to, to see when things are not right. Uh, just yesterday, as a matter of fact, Cisco came out with another 10 out of 10 serious vulnerability uh, for some of their equipment where there was another hard-coded hard uh, key pair in their software. So, you know, everybody has their issues, but uh, Microtik does a really good job of allowing the community to help improve the security of not only the platform, but the devices. We use the Hex product for our small businesses. So when you think about, will this work for my, my endpoint? Absolutely. Uh, at the Hex size, we have uh, no degradation of service all the way up to the CCR in our data centers and even the CHRs and Amazon. So uh, there's no impact to the, to the device. You're not going to see any degradation. You're not going to see your CPU spike up, and you're not going to see any memory usage uh, increases because we keep that transfer of data very small into kilobits. 
So this is all backed by our threat defense platform. Axiom was founded by some former government officials, including myself from the State Department. We have people who have taken over 100 different open and close sources of threat intelligence. And what we do is we bring those in on a daily basis and we come up with the most important things to update for our clients. And this includes URLs, IP addresses, layer seven matching, uh, and the dynamic firewall rules so that we can make sure that we're ahead of the hackers. Now, we are one of the only companies that are able to publish dark web nodes. So the Tor, as you know, the dark web is, uh, they have the exit nodes that are published every 30 minutes or so. We grab those IPs immediately and we push them out to our micro ticks in real time so that we can block based on IP addresses. And those are very dynamic, uh, so they have to be changed as soon as they come out. Um, again, there's no impact on that. These relative data points are IP addresses, host names, URLs, and other indicators of compromise, which we find with layer seven looking at the deep packet inspection. So what are some of our sources? As I mentioned, these are open and closed, like Bright Cloud, uh, Spam House, uh, some of the ones you may know, some that you may not know. We also have a network of our own honeypots where we're out there sniffing for things that are going on. We have researchers that put that data in. And then, of course, our own clients become sources of data, so they're feeding back information that they see uh, at each one of their client sites. And what do those data points mean? So basically, we're able to add these IP, IP addresses for botnets, ransomware, malware, uh, the URLs for the different uh, domains that are blacklisted, the Tor nodes, as we've mentioned, malicious domains, layer seven filter rules, which is very important. And so we believe that the risk factor to any business on cybersecurity is the time that a vulnerability is identified in the world until you patch your systems against it. Very simply put, hackers are looking at that same playbook to get the information that they use to exploit companies. So this Cisco <coughs> vulnerability from yesterday that was identified is now going to be exploited by people who will, let's say, weaponize it to try to get into Cisco's until people patch. Uh, most customers are patching their Cisco gear quarterly, so four times a year, some patch semi-annually. So hackers now have between three to six months to perhaps use that exploit to get into businesses who are slow to patch their systems. This is exactly why we update our system over 150 times a day. And we recommend that everybody in this room bring your router OS up to, up to the latest version and make sure that you're looking out for these vulnerabilities. So cybersecurity is about you know, making sure that you know what's happening out in the world and keeping your systems patched against it. Best practices, of course, are gonna help you, but if there's something new that uh, is such as a zero day that comes out, you're gonna have to make sure that you can uh, put those changes in place pretty quickly so that you or your customers are, are kept safe. Uh, with Microtik and the dynamic firewall rules, it allows us to add offenders to different lists. I'll give you a great example, one of the port scan detectors, uh, not only the weighting who will uh, give you the ability to detect port scans and weigh them, but also add them to dynamic lists so that you can block somebody for an hour, and then if they continue to offend, you can block them for an, uh, you know, a day, and then so on, so that you can identify repeat offenders and put them into a block list based on the dynamic uh, firewall rules. And that is on the Micro, Microtik wiki as well. So that's not something we came up with. That's just the ability that Microtik has inherently that we are using to help our clients stay ahead of, of the hackers. So this is how it works for our product. We've created a set of uh, scripts that run. So our clients get an RSC file. So if you're trying to do this at home, follow along with me. You'll see how we do it so that you can uh, look at implementing it yourself. Um, but basically we have a data collector that's in the cloud that we curate this data uh, sources from. Uh, and then all these different uh, set malware updates run on a timely basis every 10 minutes. If there's a new update, we push it down automatically. We don't have access to our clients' routers and we don't want that. We want to just push out the updates without seeing their data. That way we don't have any compliance issues or any crossover of data uh, from our clients. As you can see here, this is a curated list of firewall rules that allows us to uh, not only match against the information that we're putting in the firewall, but also drop that packet or use the tar pit functionality that Microtik has. Um, these rules are dynamic, as we talked about with the port scanner, and the denial of service mitigation built into the Microtik firewall is, is tremendous and very effective. Uh, in fact, we've used this in some data centers and gotten a lot of really rave reviews uh, because when you look at SIN floods and ACK floods and some of the DNS amplification and reflection attacks that we're seeing across the internet, uh, Microtik allows us to tar pit those, those connections that once they are identified, so we keep that connection alive. So that the hacker can't release that connection and then keep trying again. If we were to drop that packet, it would reopen that connection stream for the hacker to continue to hit us uh, with that. So as, when we're tar pitting that, we're using the CPU power 
of the MicroTik CCR to hold that connection so the hacker can't continue to attack us. And we put them in the tar pit and then in the block list and then we drop them and we start blocking them from that way. This is the complicated part. Uh, we have a, uh, a group of software developers that are writing regular expression matching. So you'll see on, uh, on your firewall, under the firewall tab, all the way to the right, layer seven protocols. This is a very effective deep packet inspection engine that you can write your own code for. Uh, we have one for torrents and ransomware uh, that match on different contents of the packet. This is where you get actually into the layer seven stuff. It's also where we can do some application control uh, as well as uh, direct URL matching for things like CoinHive, which is a known cryptojacking uh, website. So by using uh, this regular expression matching and layer seven, we're able to look deep inside the packet. Instead of just port and protocol, we can actually look at what the packet is trying to do and then take action according to our dynamic rules. So when you uh, connect to our platform, you get those address lists that are downloaded and each one of them has uh, an address list name and then the address list are dynamically updated on the fly. So here you see our Tor nodes and our ransomware nodes, and these are updated uh, constantly so that they're always up to date. Um, and we test this quite frequently. We'll actually go out on an unprotected computer to the Tor, connect to our browser, and jump on the dark web. We'll look at the address that we're giving, and then we'll look at this list and make sure it's on there. So these are about as accurate as you can find on the internet because, uh, again, they change quite frequently. That's a way that the people try to get anonymity. Um, and so we're working with not only the Tor project, but with also some of the recordings. You can go back in time to see when an IP address was actually a part of the dark web. So if you need to correlate an attack to see if that uh, event was during the time that that was a Tor node, you can correlate that information. But we're building that into our address list. <clears throat> the benefits of using your micro MicroTik, again, this is for people who already own MicroTik hardware and want to make use of the advanced firewall features uh, that we've discovered and we use for our clients, but it allows full layer seven filtering of threats. It is definitely not a UTM, and for years, so many vendors were trying to, to pack uh, so many things into their firewall, antivirus, anti-spam, uh, all these different technologies. We advocate for using the firewall for what it is, and that is a full layer seven firewall, not an antivirus. The antivirus should be on the endpoint, but uh, I might rec uh, recommend that over 75% of attacks happen at the network level, which means that they're not attacking the endpoint. We have some clients that think because they have antivirus running on their computers, they're safe. Well, that's just not the case because uh, basically hackers are attacking your uh, switches, your routers, your firewalls, anything they can get to on the network, which allows them to then listen in on the network traffic that you have going across the wire and they can see everything they would like to see without having to, to get on the endpoint and defeat antivirus. Uh, this also protects IoT devices because your Alexas, your home, Google Homes, they can't have an antivirus client put on them. So you must protect the network that they're on. So that's why it's so important to use uh, one of these next generation firewalls to, to do that. And again, this is based on MicroTik's best practices and we use you know, support and input from the MicroTik community to always make our protections better. Definitely perfect for your edge protection. So for you ISPs that have you know, edge uh, routers uh, or maybe MSPs that have edge routers, this is perfect for that. You can also put it inside your core and uh, through some of your segments, but definitely perfect for your, your perimeters. Um, and your protections must be dynamic and, they, and you know, static rules are out of date as soon as they're installed. You also, we've built some reports that'll allow you to integrate to our portal, which is online. You can log in, see not only your traffic graphs, but what kind of uh, events you're seeing from a DDoS attack, a targeted, the ransomware, port scan, botnets, and so that stuff's gonna show up here. If you have clients that you're servicing, you can give these reports to them. Uh, even under your own logo, you can white label these reports for them so they have uh, a sense that you know, you're, they're paying you to do a service and you're actually providing them with value. We also have a dashboard feature functionality which allows us to take a look at all of your MicroTix under one uh, pane of glass. Uh, and this is going to show you things like connections, DHCP leases, your ARP table and things like that. And this is the firewall portion of our dashboard which basically shows you in real time what's being, uh, what's being matched, packet filtering and the packet trap, etc. And shows you a nice donut here with the colors. And I know you guys all love the torch tool which is one of my favorite tools. Uh, but currently you can't save it to a log file from the MicroTik. We've been able to make that uh, integrated in part of our dashboard here so you can torch 
and output that to a log so that you can save it and keep it for uh, a long period of time. And then the IP services menu, this is where you can see your ARP table, clear your cache, your DHCP server, and do some basic configurations right from this dashboard. And again, that was a quick short version. I'll be out front here if anybody has any other questions. Um, this is compatible with uh, Microtech uh, Router OS version 6.2 and above. Uh, but, you know, we always recommend uh, updating to the latest version for that. Uh, we do have some specials for people who are attending MUM as well and a free month if you're interested in our services. Um, but this is definitely something you can do with your Microtics, and uh, we'll be here to help you out for the rest of the evening. Thank you, guys. Oh, and questions. Yes, sir. Yeah, so Tony, um, obviously you implement a lot of firewall rules and so forth, but how do you integrate with existing firewall rules to make sure that they don't disappear? It's a great question. So we actually uh, put all of our rules at the top, so they, we, they default to the very top, so that uh, ours are just matchers and very general, so there's n it's not going to affect your routing. Uh, and if a customer has uh, a rule that is actually conflicting, they can <coughs> disable that rule automatically out of, the, out of there. And we can help them customize that if they need some help. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So can you put this in place uh, in between the existing router and the network connection to get it a bridge filter instead? Absolutely. I would say 80% of our clients are in, in that fashion. So we put an RB2011 uh, or uh, a hex model out there in a transparent bridge mode and we use this as a filter uh, in between. Very effective <coughs> that way. Okay. Rough pricing? Uh, $25 per month, the subscription model. That's USD or US? Yes, that is US dollars, and uh, you know, we can go right through the website for that. Is that per device subscription? Yes, it's per device per month, yes, sir. We do have vol uh, volume discounts, and for MSPs and resellers, we have a great uh, discount program as well. Thank you guys very much.